All right, guys, today's video, I'm gonna take you guys with me 100% of the time. My voice is gone, but I wanna give you guys a 100% true, authentic day in the life of SEMA 2019. And really quick, before we get into it, I'm gonna be giving away $500 of store credit on movement.com. All you gotta do to win is comment down below what car you're more excited to see this year, the 458 or the Supra, and leave your Instagram handle in the comment section below. I'm gonna be picking one of you guys to win, so stay posted. What's up guys, today is Tuesday here at SEMA. This is the first day that it's open publicly. Tuesday is the day that we are not only revealing the Supra, to everyone at SEMA, which by this point you guys have already seen us finish it, but more importantly, today's video is gonna be all about the 458 pulling the sheet. You guys have been seeing teasers of that car for the last like, what, month now? And I've been really selective of what I've been showing you. So today, this is in a really brief rundown what our schedule is gonna look like. We have a 9 a.m. check-in and media uh, interview at nine with Toyo. Then we have a 10 a.m. sheet pull with Toyo with the 458. Then we're gonna run over here with Magnaflow, pull the sheet on the Supra. Then we have a signing with Meguiar, we have a signing with Toyo, and a whole bunch of stuff in between. So I have my boy Cameron with us today. He's gonna be filming the video for us, third person. Uh, it's just really difficult for us to film here. This is a huge, huge convention. If you guys haven't seen me come to the show for five or six years now, and doing a vlog style is just really difficult. As you can tell, I'm losing my voice. Today is gonna to be incredibly crazy. I'm gonna take you guys along with me so you can witness the madness with me as I go through it. So when we were, you know when we were filming or when we were looking at the Street Hunter, there were like certain body gappings that we were like kind of concerned about. The things that we were really worried about, like when we, the moment when it got like a millimeter too big, I was looking at the other kits, there's a lot of gapping on other on the Pandem kits that are way bigger. And we weren't even thinking the thing about is, it. We can get it so much better. But for the purpose of being here, you know how we were tripping? Yeah. And like look oh, at shit. Yeah. <laughs> like the gapping in here. Like that on our car we were tripping out about. From when we were looking at it at our kit, it looked like it makes me feel better about our gapping. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. Yeah, so it just makes me feel a little bit better. I was tripping out, man. Yeah, I was tripping out, dude. Like I know, dude. You, know? you should just. You, you were tripping out, dog. I was like, I'm here to fix it. But luckily, Mickey came with me, so he gave. We so I had Mickey, me and Mickey, just kind of like, we gotta figure this shit out, dog. Looks good though. I think it looks better in person. The rear end, um, I think. You know, not my favorite, but it definitely looks better in person. This isn't. This has the swan neck, which is different than the other wing that we saw. But yeah, the reason why they have all have this duck bill is because this mounts right here. Oh my! Looks God. pretty good, right? Oh, dude. Oh my man, out here. <laughs> Thank you, man. Are you here for the 458 reveal? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Been waiting here for a while. <laughs> awesome. Appreciate some of you guys showing up, dude. I was like, I was like, I don't know if anyone's gonna show up. Oh, the throttle boys, you guys made it. I was like a little nervous. I was like, I don't know if anyone's coming. Cause I feel like everyone wants to see the Supra more than this car. So yeah, no, but Team Rari. Yeah, man, yeah. I'm hyped, dude. This is a uh, craziest build we've ever done. So. so it's been like, man, I don't know, like three months or so from this car being 100% wrecked to Calvin and I getting this car with not knowing what we were doing and how we were going to fix it. Um, so coming across, securing this kit was insane. So we'll pull the sheet, we'll get some good shots of it. Hopefully everyone here likes it. By the way, a lot of you guys showed up, which is awesome. So everyone that was at SEMA, I appreciate you guys coming through. Um, hope you guys like the full look. You ready? You ready, Ev? Okay, we'll start from the front. All right, here we go. Let's go, dog.
One of the biggest things that I tried to keep from you guys was actually the wheels of this car. You guys know how much I love the mesh style wheels. And these wheels, believe it or not, are actually the same exact wheels that we have on the BRZ. So the H3 Classic 300s. And the only real color that I feel like a lot of you guys are able to figure out, the only real color that you can do with green or British Racing Green that really works is a gold or black or white. And I wanted to stay away from black and white because they're kind of a common color. So with the wheel finishes of the car, there really weren't too many options that we could do with this green. In my head, it was either black, it was white, or it was like a goldish bronze type of color. Bronze I've done in the past, so I kind of want to stick away from it. Black is too common and white, I just didn't really like the look on a Ferrari. And that was really the biggest underlying thing with this car. I think with, the, I think with cars like Lambos or even McLarens, you can go these crazy like Skittle color cars. But Ferrari, it might just be me, but I feel like there's like a weird like sense of like class and you have to keep it like that Ferrari look. Um, so I wanted to be aggressive with the color, but also be like a mature color. So we ended up going with a gold inspired center. Now it's actually uh, brushed champagne. So it's a little dark in the shade with the car, but in the sunlight it actually brightens up and reflects light really well. Followed by the polished lips. You guys know how much I love that. I was happy HRE was okay with me doing it because they were like, do something different. But I was like, dude, I can't, I need it. Um, so yeah, I'm over the moon about it. I've been trying to hide these from you guys as much as possible, but I'm glad I can finally, guys, finally let you guys in on it. And without you guys' support and constant love over the years, this build never would have happened. So big thank you to everyone out there watching. Then on the interior, we finally were able to dial up the uh, garnishes too. So we have the carbon fiber garnishes to match with all the rest of the carbon. And we also had Meguiar's do a full detail on the interior and brighten everything up. And something that I want to show you guys that we didn't really show too much on video is a lot of people, or the other, what should I say, the GT3 fenders weren't designed for a street car. So getting the front fenders to work with a street car took a lot of cutting and we had to take out a lot of pieces. And one of the main pieces that we really struggled with was the cowl. So you'll notice on the two sides, you actually have the actual fender hanging through the cowl. So I talked about this a little bit on video, but we had to end up trimming this cowl to get it to sit flush on the glass. Uh, a lot of, I think the other car that did it just cut this out completely, which is a way of doing it, but we wanted to preserve the carbon as much as we could. So we actually cut these out and then I did the best that I could to modify it, especially with, with the windshield washer brackets and actually the windshield wipers. To get that to fit was extremely difficult because it actually hangs like six inches lower beneath the fenders. So getting that to work and fit took a lot of precision and cutting to get that through. So the fact that I got this looking as, in my opinion, OEM in as stock as possible, uh, with the way it looks, was a big accomplishment. And it was something I was very, very scared to do. And I think we did a pretty good job at it. So one of the things on the wing that we kept that I showed you guys a little bit, is when you get a closer look, you'll actually will see like what looks to be a stencil. Now, when we got this car, remember the whole entire kit came off of a race car. So we had to manipulate the pieces to work as a street car. Now I fixed everything on the whole entire kit to make it look flawless, but on the wing, there was a couple raw pieces. As you can see, there's a couple raw edges right here, and there's a couple raw edges over here, and there's this big patch right in the middle. We decided to keep that kind of there to preserve the character and to kind of have that carry the story of what, of what the kit once had on the racetrack. So to me, it's kind of like a hidden little treasure. It's like a little beauty mark that nonetheless is a, is a conversation starter for most people. But to me, it's one of those hidden features. And the wing brackets got those to fit flawless. We got those mounted up. Again, this is still a prototype. It's a little bit shaky when you get high speed. So we're gonna have to do some cross bracing uh, once we get back home. But other than the wing, we're also able to get the rear, this, that's the stock rear diffuser that bolts up underneath the rear bumper. So the fact that we were able to get that to fit and sit flush again was a pretty big accomplishment. Cause like I said, I wanted to make this car as OEM and as street looking as possible. So one of the biggest things that we wanted to do at the front was uh, really accentuate all the dark colors on it. The front definitely carries a lot more uh, um, character. It has a lot more characteristic than the rear does because not only do you have the front bumper grills, you have the, the fender grills, both of those we had to sand just enough to expose the carbon but not get too deep and ruin the carbon. And a lot of people, when we first did this, were like, Teej, you need to get the GT3 hood and you need to get the GT3 mirrors. I said off the bat, I just wasn't a fan of those. So we actually picked up a uh, 458 Special hood, which in my opinion is the best looking hood 
you can get on a Ferrari. Looks so mean. The lines and the characteristics that it follows are amazing. And the, GT, and the GT3 hood actually just has two holes that dump to the tub. And again, this is a street car, not a race car, so the tub is usable. We can still put luggage in there. It still like has a seal so it doesn't get wet. So the, the GT3 hood, just in my opinion, just wasn't the fit. And then the mirrors, Cameron, if you actually get a larger view of the car here, these mirrors stick out so far and like really give the car a lot of character. I've always been a fan of them. So I wanted to keep that on the car rather than going to the, GT, the GT3 mirrors. And also this is a street car. These are really big mirrors so I can see a lot. And the GT3 ones are super small, really hard to use on the street. And I really had, that was my biggest thing is how do I make this car usable on the street? I don't want this thing to be sitting in the garage and never see the light of day. That was a big, big point for me. So if you get a look at the wheel fitment, one of the biggest challenges with this car was actually getting wheel fitment. Now you'll notice it's not what you would call like hella flush. We actually had to be a little bit conservative here and you'll notice on the other two cars that exist, the wheel fitment is very similar in the front. To the, uh, so when you take a look from the lateral side of the car, you'll notice there's not a lot of room in the front and there's not a lot of room in the back, whereas most body kits, you leave those very, very wide so you can put a really gnarly offset wheel to get that turning radius. Well, again, this kit wasn't designed to be on the street. On the GT3 cars, these wheels are sunk in five, six inches, which allow all that scrub with that radius arch. So when getting wheels to fit, it was a very fine line of going as low as possible and being able to clear. When I go lock to lock, I can't even fit a credit card behind the back of the wheel. That's how little of room there is. So if we would have gone any farther, the car just would have been really undrivable on the street. It's my biggest thing is I want to be able to drive this thing. I want this kit to live on the streets and not live in a garage. So I had to make it usable to where like I can actually drive the car. Same thing with the rear. This is a simple thing. We could have brought this super far out. But the last thing I want is to be going on the freeway, hit a certain bump, and have this wheel jack up, touch the inside of this lip, which is all carbon Kevlar, and that won't crack. That will explode at that speed. And that was the biggest thing I was told. Uh, they were like, keep in mind, this is tough, but if your wheel bites on it, it doesn't crack like fiberglass. It will explode into pieces, and that is thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to get another one. So I left just enough of an offset or that at full compression, it will, it will miss the inside of that fender and talk appropriately, or as I like to call it, that's just exotic fitment. That's what you do when you have a car that's that expensive. Uh, but other than that, um, you guys have seen most of the car. I I'm like so over the moon about it. The color is so unique, and uh, a lot of people are like, so is that just a true British racing green? It's not, it's actually a, a couple different colors that we put together with SOS. And I have a huge shout out to them. They did so much work for us over the past month. Um, and big shout out to HRE Wheels. They really helped us out getting our wheel fitment dialed in. And nonetheless, from those two companies, the friends and supporters that helped us with this car made it possible. Without them, it really wouldn't have been possible. From all the guys at Throttle, to Calvin, to Kevin, to SOS, to Brent from HRE, Tito, so many people um, made this get possible and it would not have been done without all their help. So I have them to thank. Um, I'm gonna stop talking. I'll let you guys enjoy a few shots of the car and uh, we'll get moving on. So we are uh, at the Magnaflow booth. Uh, the Magnaflow booth is like a big rectangle. And on the inside of the rectangle, there's like a kind of like a little like pit here. And in this pit, you can kind of like separate a little bit. It helps for us because for everyone that we have filming for us, like. Look at all this crap is all our stuff filming for the stuff and you guys will see on bail videos and we're gonna be releasing more stuff later in the week of a bunch of stuff that you guys will see but uh, so we're getting here about 15 minutes out from our unveil there's a lot of you guys here man so it just means a lot and SEMA is uh, generally a more of an older audience because it's all like industry stuff so I don't know how some of you young guys are sneaking in here but I respect it I did the same thing when I was your age so so a lot of you guys here to make me look real good here for Richard, so I appreciate it. Uh, but I think we're gonna just kind of figure out how we're gonna announce it, how we're gonna do it, and because uh, this one we're gonna have a PA system, I'm gonna be on mic, a little bit more PR for this one because it's like our own brand that we're launching, so should be interesting, should be really, really fun. So we're doing a PA system, right? Or who, okay, who am I, ta am, I, am I talking to you? or? Is so I didn't know exactly how you wanted to roll with that. It's all about the builder. Um, our part is the one piece, you know, the XMOD exhaust system that we have on the bottom, but 
we want to talk about the things that people, they obviously, if they're watching MagnaFlow, they're going to know about the exhaust. So we want to talk about the things that they didn't get to hear about. So right now, the wide body is probably one of the biggest components of it. Talk about HRE, talk about the other elements you've done in design, uh, and have a conversation if you want. So, I mean, you know how to talk to your audience. Behind the car to the right, excuse me. Damn, that's crazy, dog. That's crazy. All right, thanks everybody for gathering around here at the Magaflow booth, and we are here to unveil TJ Hunt's 2020 Supra. If you guys have been following along, obviously you know where we are today, but you probably haven't seen this with your own eyes. So we're just excited with you, uh, getting TJ out here and talking about what he went through to get this car where it is today. We're happy to be a part of this build, and we're, it was a good time working with you and trying to develop out what is our newest series of exhausts, our X-Mod series exhaust components. Right. And in all that work, uh, we've been watching over the last few weeks where you've gone with this car, and of course, just two weeks ago, it was nothing like what it looks like here today. So tell us a little bit about that journey you went through here in the last two weeks. It's been a big journey. Uh, before we even get into that, I just like off the bat want to say, um, Thank you so much for everyone who came here. Uh, I see a lot of young faces, which is, is weird for the SEMA industry because it's like, how did all those young people get passes? And uh, I was young here at one time and made fake passes to get here. So shout out to all the young guys that are here. I love that. Um, I, I'm like so overwhelmed. Um, this is like such an amazing experience. And I literally am holding back tears right now. This is like an actual dream come true. So thank you so much for everyone to come out here to support this off the bat. It truly means the world to me. Uh, but this car has been, uh, and uh, it, we actually documented, started documenting this thing 10 days ago. So 10 days ago, this car was completely stock and our pieces literally just got um, fresh out of the press of the 3D printing. So, um, you know, from the start of doing this journey, it was how can I make a larger impact on the industry? Well, I took things that I love, uh, that I grew up, adoring and I tried to make my own footprint in uh, the world of, of cars and I had a lot of amazing people that I met uh, without Street Fighter LA, without Massive It, without BCT getting along, without John Spall helping with renderings. There are so many individual people that played a big portion in getting this here today. It was not an individual job and that's like my biggest thing that I want to stress. Because I think on YouTube, I'm like the spokesperson for this car because it's they see my face in this car. And sometimes I think it gives the impression that, oh, like he did that by himself. And it's like, no, he did that with 10 to 15 other people did that. And it was a team effort uh, for sure. We just finished up our signing with Meguiar's. Uh, we have a 30 minute break. So right now we are, uh, well actually we have 15 minutes now. We're gonna be heading over to the Toyo Tires booth which is outdoors. Uh, and we're gonna be doing another signing shoot with them for about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, and then that concludes, oh boy, this is SEMA in a nutshell. Excuse me, sorry, yep, oh, yep, sorry, yep, hello. <coughs> so SEMA's getting, it's at the point now where it's like, Gnarly, gnarly, gnarly all the time. Uh, we're gonna have another shoot. Uh, so like I said, we have Sunny Toyo, finish that up, and then our day here, day one, will be uh, concluded. It's really cool being here now and having all these things go on. And I feel like I always talk about this and my mind's all over the place today and I'm trying to absorb all of it. I don't know if I talked about it already, but coming here, you know, years ago, and I, I really didn't have anything to do. I would just walk around the show aimlessly and like, drool at everything and to now be here and like have an agenda 
to go do and doing the reveals and the signings and all that stuff, seeing the face on the wall, it's kind of like everything's kind of coming into fruition. Everything that I like dreamed of and I knew would happen one day, it's coming to life. And I just followed everything. I've been telling you guys from the absolute start, if you do anything with passion, you can make it happen, like no matter what. Like give it 100 million, 10 percent, it will happen. So the fact that that's happening, it's kind of weird. Toyo's like, yo, you have a signing. I'm like, oh, cool, who are we doing signings with? And they're like, oh, well, all we have for signings is you and Ken Block. I was like, huh? They're like, yeah, you and Ken. Yeah, have you guys are doing signings this afternoon? And I'm like, Ken Block. They're like, yeah. And it's just like, those moments, it's like, what the f You know, it's, it's stuff like that. Bro, it's like, I, I'm not able to absorb it right now. My mind's like too scattered, but it's just wild. It's so wild, it's so amazing, and stoked to be here and really happy to bring you guys along. I think this video is a little, not, a little long. I think this video is a little longer than normal, so I really wanted to bring you guys with me 100% to see what the day is like. I think I'm doing a signing here at 2.30. Oh, do you know, do you know anything about that? Yes, hi, okay. how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. You are a guy. Yeah, you can start it, bro. Dan, do I get to wear the jacket too? Oh, see if you've been Damn. Hell yeah, dog. Does that look good? Dang. Dang. How you guys doing? Yeah, man. Absolutely. A different in person. Yeah, like voice. Okay, I lost my voice this morning. Oh, no wonder. No, no. No, dude, my voice, my voice is gone. You hear that going through puberty out here? Yeah, that's what it's like. <laughs> and then the camera looks like you're real tall. Yeah, everyone always calls me shorter in person. Yeah, you. Thank you. It's not that no. short, but you know, it's a little bit. It's nah, short. I get that a lot. Where's I think Calvin? it's because I'm next to Calvin and he's like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Like makes me feel like he's at home. He's gonna be here on Thursday. <laughs> So we just finished up our last thing of the day. My voice is now like, see ya, gone. She left. So we just finished this up, went really good. Thank you everyone who came out. We have a, a team dinner with McGuire's um, in three hours. So I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna shower up, try to get my voice back, and uh, I'll see you guys at dinner. Does that mean a full send? He's, he's holding me back. I'm just trying to get the, just trying to get a rowdy in here. I gotta tell him I gotta keep it down. So we're uh, dinner is in it. about 20 minutes. We gotta get a little drink beforehand. Gotta celebrate. You boys got the jackets on. You guys are looking fly. What what are we at? What are we at tonight? Yo, we're uh, we're at Cosmopolitan. My voice is gone, Cameron. I'm so sorry. Cosmopolitan. Um, they can hear you. You're good. Gonna get a little, gonna get a little loose tonight. Gonna celebrate a lot of big things in the works. Uh, so it's gonna be kind of like. So we'll see. We'll do dinner. Uh, McGuire's is treating all of us. I was thinking like 30 people. I told you 20. It's like 35. So uh, we're gonna hang out, see a bunch of familiar faces, uh, and kind of just relax for a bit. And then uh, everything restarts tomorrow. All right, what do we got here, Teach? So we got a special drink here that the bartender hooked us up with. So it's a margarita, like special like ginger margarita. You drink it, once you take a sip, you know what it tastes like? There's a little flower in there. You're gonna eat that for 30 seconds. It's gonna taste like shit. Keep chewing it, and then once you, spend, once you chew it, swallow it, take a sip of the drink. I already took my sip, so we're just gonna send it on this like... Can you see that? Yes. It looks like a little pollen turd or something. It's part of the mushroom family. <laughs> no. No, it's not. Don't. 
All right. Give it a try. Just keep chewing. All over your mouth. All over your mouth. <laughs> Did you swallow it? Don't swallow it. You gotta keep chewing it. All over your mouth. Don't eat it in one spot. It's so nasty. I can smell it. I can smell him eating it. What the frick? Keep eating it. It's so good, it's terrible, right? What the frick? <laughs> what the frick, man? We're a, we're a Christian channel. Oh, God. Now, now really? drink? Is your mouth numb? Yeah. Is your tongue like all fuzzy? Yeah. Makes your mouth completely numb. It feels like my tongue has like fuzzies on it. Yeah. So it will last like three minutes and then like it like heightens all your like taste buds to that drink. It goes away. Round two. Whoa, what's going on? <laughs> Hey, give me saying what's up to everybody. So. <laughs> long time no see. I know, right? Yeah, long, long time, time buddy. How are you? We're up here. What's up, dude? Good to see you again. What's up, dude? That car. <laughs> Thank you. Finally meet you. I know. I'm gonna make sure you're not you're not showing. <laughs> okay. Dude, pleasure to meet you. Yeah, this is awesome, dude. Long time. Congrat. Yeah, I know. We touched a little bit. I lost my voice yeah, this morning, so I like, uh, excuse my voice. I can only imagine seeing uh, the I'm unveiling so, so everything. Finally meet you. Congratulations with the, the Supra. Have you invited? That's Thank like, you. dude. That's it, dope. It means a lot. The Ferrari, all that stuff. So. This is the McGuire's family table. So enjoy the dinner and uh, enjoy the company. So yeah, cheers. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so it is now uh, 11 o'clock, and uh, we're wrapping for the night. Boys decided to be a little, so they're all gonna go to bed, and I think I'm gonna do the same. We got another early start tomorrow, but I really want to take you guys on a complete like day in the life, start to finish of what our day is at SEMA look like this year. Uh, super honored and blessed for the opportunities that we have and I'm really excited for the future. And shout out to all you guys that are supporting and I've been there from the start. I wouldn't be where I am without you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you guys uh, in the next one. Peace out and keep moving forward.